I'm just going to share with you today on uh, how to tie one of my more productive coho flies for this season. I know we're kind of getting on the year a little bit, but there's still plenty of time left to whip a few of these up and get them in your box and add them to your coho arsenal and finish off the year strong. So I've got an Eric's NS 110 streamer hook in a size 6. I've thrown a 530 seconds gold brass bead on the end there. Gonna pop a few wraps of 0 0.015 lead or lead free wire on there, whatever your preference is. I like to add a little bit of lead, just push it into the, the large hole in the end of the bead there. When you tie it over with some thread, it really helps secure that bead into place. And having a little bit of extra weight on the front of that hook shank is going to give that fly a little bit more of a pitching action in the water. Got some 6 aught uni thread. We're going to lay down a good heavy base of thread. Start with a good base and that's going to keep all your materials from rotating on the hook shank. Now, I've got some, I don't know, light olive, golden olive. I'll link the proper color down in the description. Uh, it's Wooly Bugger Marabou. I prefer to pull it off the sides of the stem for this pattern. I just kind of bunch them together a little bit. Sort of keep it a uniform length, but not really. I'll tie that in as a clump. And why I do that, it just kind of adds a little bit more taper to the material. I think it moves better in the water. It doesn't have such a boxy sort of end to it. I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. I'll tie it in at the hook point. So we just took this feather and tie it in. Where are we in focus there? You can kind of see it there. How flat and I don't know. I'm probably overthinking it, but I think it looks better if you pull the material off the side myself. I'll take a little bit more off there. And just give that fly a good thick tail. I tend to really dress my flies heavy on the bench. And I can really, really easily modify them on the on the river to suit the conditions. You can always trim a little bit of material out. It's really, really hard to add more once you're on the water. So tie that in good and tight. Don't be afraid to use some thread. I'm gonna grab a couple of strands. Of crinkle mirror flash and tie them in just add a little bit of accent to the tail a couple of strands down each side from there Go all the way back, and I'm going to make myself a dubbing loop. This is the kind of dubbing loop tool I've always used. I don't know, I'm sure there's probably better ones out there. That's just the one that I know. Use whatever style you like. I'm going to throw a little bit of Senyo's Fusion Dub into that dubbing loop. And it's kind of nice olive green with a bunch of metallic flash in there, some holograph sort of stuff going on. And I take that and I just evenly spread it through my dubbing loop. A little bit more. A 
said, this is going to dress out heavy right to begin with. But we're going to tease a bunch of that out before we finish. And we can always remove more when we're at the water. I'm going to throw a little bit of chartreuse ice dub in there as well too. That just kind of makes the whole thing pop at the end. So twist up your dubbing loop. Go to town on that sucker. If you use too, thread, too thin of a thread here, it's going to break when you're trying to twist your dubbing loop. And the fish's teeth are going to thrash it. And if you're going to spend all this time tying a fly, you want it to be a little bit durable. Get a few fish out of it anyway. Take the end with my hackle pliers and I just wind that material forward and I pull any stray fibers back towards the tail. We've never done a dubbing loop before. It's going to take a little bit of practice to kind of gauge how much material to throw in there to completely cover the hook shank. You can do it multiple stages if you want, or you can just twist it on to your tying thread, whatever works the best for you. I could have made that even a little bit bigger, but I'm going to get every last bit out of that one. Secure the end of that dubbing brush that I made. Give it a quick whip finish. I always try and push that thread back in underneath the bead head and give it a second whip finish. Because again, you want that sucker to last. Trim your thread. Get your dubbing brush, your dubbing pick or whatever you got, a little toothbrush, some Velcro. some of that material out, make it nice and buggy, give it tons of movement in the water. And with that forward weighted shank on that hook, that sucker's going to have a lot of movement. And that's been my go-to fly all season. A little more in there than I like. There. Tie that on in your line, just add water and hang on. So that's sort of a new thing for us here at Sea Run. I hope to do more of these for you guys. Show you some patterns that work for us, work for me. If there's any particular patterns that you guys want to see tied or any sort of techniques, drop a comment, let me know. Come by the shop, we can talk about some things and see if we can up your fly tying game. Thanks for watching.